we're back outside the box score with me, Mark Rollins, right here on the score 1260. I am joined in studio by some very special guests from Barstool Sports. We've got Chris Clemmer, Frank the Tank Fleming, Mikey Betts back there with the camera. Uh, make sure uh, we don't have the best microphones in the world, I will say. So make sure we're, we're right on mic uh, to hear you guys. We got Mikey Betts. We got Reed. Every, everyone's here jammed into the score 1260 studios. It is not a very large studio so we try to fit everyone in as best we can Stephen Byer the best intern in the world here as well you two gentlemen were at the Syracuse Mets game last night Frank how about you why don't you tell me about your experience at NBT Bank Stadium it was your first time at the ballpark right I think it's a nice stadium uh, they, they did a good job renovating it I like mm-hmm. the uh this the scoreboard it looks like uh, New York State this, this yes we've got the New York State scoreboard it's very cool and what was what I like is uh, the train yeah, <laughs> with the the train that go it blows its horn every single time it goes by, and this one train, I swear it must have taken ten minutes to do it for the full train to go by. Yeah, oh yeah, there's there's some big trains that go by there. It's it's a great stadium. And so it's you, almost like, and then you see all the cars, Amazon, 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 Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. You enjoy, but you you like the renovations. I don't know. Did you guys get to go out to the bullpen bar, the Salt City deck? Uh, we where didn't you get to those two areas. We just got outside of it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it, Chris. Uh, what what were your thoughts on the stadium? I, I thought it was great. Uh, people were awesome. Stadium was bigger than I would have anticipated. It's a mm-hmm. pretty it's a pretty big stadium. Yeah, it is. Um, has like two levels of like uh, luxury boxes. Yep. So uh, it was it was great. We had a we had a great time there. Fun to see Mauricio. Fun to see Vientos. And then on the other side, you get to see Curtis Mead, He's big time prospect, yeah. prospect for the Rays. So mm-hmm. you know you're seeing three top 100 prospects. Yeah. in baseball. Like so, I mean that's what it, weather was perfect. Oh, fun night at the ballpark. Yeah, it, it was a beautiful night last night. We we actually uh, got to meet briefly. I ran into you guys as I was walking across the concourse. It was great to meet you then. Great to have you on the show right now. Let's you know talk about you mentioned Mark Vientos, Ronnie Mauricio. How excited are you are you guys for these two young studs to come up and be with the be with the big club at some point? Uh, well, I think Vientos is going to be up very soon. I think yeah. uh, I think especially that there's a little bit of. Uh, Concern about uh, Starling Marte. I think if uh, Marte is not active, is not able to play in the next few days, I think they'll probably put him on the injury list, and uh, Vientos could be up very soon. Uh, Mauricio, he never, he wasn't here last year. He stayed all year last yep. year in Double A. Uh, I think now they're starting to experiment with new positions for him, and I think uh, that's either going to mean he's going to come up st- uh, probably middle of the season, or he could possibly be traded for a major piece. Yeah, in last night was the first time he had played second base all year. He had played shortstop every game going into last night. So you guys got to experience something new, a, a little Ronnie Mauricio at second base. What, what, what would you like more? Would you like to see him in the middle infield for the Mets, or do you think they should trade him? Depends. It, it, they shouldn't trade him for just any other rental player, but if they could get some like major, major piece. Uh, Brian Reynolds, perhaps, yeah. in, in a deal like that? Sure. Yes, to, to me, what Mauricio is, he's just a... He's not as good, but he's almost like too much like Francisco Lindor, and you're not in Lindor's locked up there forever. Yep. It sounds it sounds like Buck it wants to put Mauricio not only first and third to experiment a little bit, also mm-hmm. you might, you might see some corner outfield play from him. You know, like Frank said, I don't know if that's to expedite trade or if that's just to expedite some severely locking holes the Mets lineup and the Mets depth have, which is that roster is needs some work. Yeah, for sure. Especially with the the injuries right now, you got and the suspension to Max Scherzer, which I'm I I'm not I'm not a New York Mets fan. Full disclosure, I'm a Boston Red Sox fan. We can agree in that we hate the New York Yankees. So that's you know that's where we'll agree. If, yeah, we're in a room right now with Mets fans, a Red Sox fan, and, and a Yankee and fan. a Yankee this fan. We do explode. have one, sadly. Um, <laughs> that is too bad. It, it is too bad. He's he's a great kid. Otherwise, he's you know fine intern, but outside of that, he's really good kid. <laughs> and so, I'm not a that Max Scherzer suspension is a load of crap, man. That's I, it was rosin. Like it, they he washed his hands with alcohol. It seemed like he shouldn't have been suspended. Frank, you look like you've got a take on this immediately. There's so only one umpire. Phil Cuzzy, yeah. Phil Cuzzy. And, you know, the other, there's another umpire on that staff. It's the same umpire that last year, like, uh, like was held on to Madison Bumgarner's hand and then stared at him and then threw him out of the game. Yes, I remember that. Th- that umpire was on the crew as well? Yes. <laughs> it, 
It's, it's like the hall monitors now, really, with this whole foreign substance thing. I mean, you said three and, times, right? And basically, yeah, Phil, three Phil, times. Phil Cosby says that the only reason why is the other umpires don't want to do it. I'm, I'm here to, to stand strong and firm, and I'm going to bust every pitcher every time I can. Mm-hmm. I mean, isn't it crazy? Like, Herman had the same incident. He didn't get thrown out. We have, you know, Joe Musgrove from last year. And, of course, it's a Met, right, that this yeah. happens to yeah. where he gets yeah. ejected? Yeah. It, it had to have been a Met. Chris, what are your thoughts on the Scherzer suspension? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a load of garbage. Uh, I'd, yeah. say, I'd say something worse, but I don't think we're allowed to on the radio. Um, uh, no, we're not. Uh, we're <laughs> Yeah, like, the Scherzer, the Scherzer uh, sus- suspension is, is BS. It, it's it's a load of crap. Uh, you know, the thing is with the rosin, it it's up to the umpire's discretion. It's like, yeah. it, what is too much? Mm-hmm. And the idea that it almost puts all that power in the umpire's hands, which I know they can throw out anybody in any game for whatever reason anyway, but I feel like this is almost like a step too far. Like, all right, you want to legislate rosin, let us know how much exactly yep. you can get away with or you can you can have before you get suspended. Because Scherzer seemed both shocked and angry. Like, I don't think he thought he was doing anything wrong. Yeah, that's that's the thing. And we just saw it with, uh, it was Domingo Herman, right? Mm-hmm. For the Yankees, he had Rosin, he washed his hands, and then he he was fine. I believe, he, was he tossed from the game? Nope. It was the uh, yeah. Twins manager who ended up getting tossed because uh, that's he just right. didn't like how it ended yeah, up. Yeah, so we saw it with Rosin, with a different pitcher, and he didn't get a suspension, didn't get tossed from the game, and Scherzer gets to deal with this. I I just don't love it. I don't know if we can go any further before we address your shirt, by the way. Uh, yeah, I so, I thought you would enjoy this. This is a great shirt. I, I put this on strictly for you, for the people who aren't watching the live stream and just listening on the Score 1260. I am wearing a button-down shirt covered with the logo from the movie Major League. Which is exactly what we're covering on my show, Double on Play. The Double Play with uh, Brandon Walker, yeah, yes. Yeah, on the Lights, Camera, Barstool uh, podcast network. You can go there, you can watch our episodes. We cover one bad movie and one good movie each week. And Wednesday's episode, coming up next week, is Major League and Major League 3, Back to the Miners. <laughs> I was telling him, you looked shocked that there was a Major League 3 as soon as I said that. You should be. It, yeah, yeah Back to the Miners, it's atrocious. I have seen it. It's god-awful. But yes, this shirt is from a, a, a place called Baseballism. Uh, they sell a lot of major league things. I almost wore. I also have a pair of socks that have the major league logo on them. Uh, it's just one, but one logo. It's a, it's a but beautiful shirt. Thank you, Lovely. thank you very much. I I thought you would enjoy this. Now, if, talking about sports movies, you guys have you know you've covered Friday Night Lights recently. You've covered. I, wh- what is your top sports movie? Ex- besides Field of Dreams. Oof. Uh, because pro- I know you've just yeah. mentioned the we Field of did, Dreams. We just did a Field yes. of Dreams episode. We did Field of Dreams and The Babe with John Goodman, which is an atrocious movie. Oh, yeah, so that bad. movie stinks. So bad. <laughs> uh, but my, I guess besides, Field of Dreams is my favorite sports movie of all time. My second favorite would be Rocky. Rocky, okay. R- Frank, what do you think? Rocky Balboa, greatest sports movie character ever? It's got to be, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, the uh, the first four, ro- the five Rocky movies have, uh, of course, we're talking about Rocky 1, 2, Three, four, and uh, Rocky Balboa. Yep, all we don't good. acknowledge Rocky Five. <laughs> I, I'm glad we're in agreement. We don't acknowledge Rocky Five. Never it didn't happen. happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so you're you're a Rocky guy. That's your go-to sports movie. Yeah, they're very good. Uh, yeah, and 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 it's not like like the ultimate cinema ver- verte. I mean, Rocky Four. <laughs> it's they one of the funniest almost, movies. They it's, could almost call that Rocky the Musical because. <laughs> Like two thirds of the movie is music montages. Yep. <laughs> Listen, if you get the Eye of the Tiger in there, you it's. I, I love Rocky. I love the Rocky movies. I've always been a huge Rocky fan. I'm a big boxing fan, so they, they I've always enjoyed them. But yeah, the the montages are they're classic. I mean, it's just classic '80s camp at its finest. And I love. It. Are, have you guys? I don't think you've covered a Rocky movie yet. Are you going to at some point? Oh, definitely. I mean, you got to figure there's eight of them, right? So, yeah. I mean, there's so many, or even nine of them now, right? Uh, Let's see. So, so yeah, six yeah, Rocky, three Rocky Creed. Creed. Yeah. Yep. So uh, there's nine of them. So we're definitely going to get there. And uh, Brand and I both like. Them. I love. I think I might love it even a little more than he does. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are just fantastic. Rocky Balboa, my favorite movie character of all time. Not even sports movie. Movie Ooh, character. Ooh, that's that's high praise. That's very high praise. Uh. I mean, any chances we'll see a Rocky Balboa um, niche category on the dozen? Oh, uh, not from me, because what ha- when you do a movie category, Jeff finds the most. That's the thing with Jeff. Thing. Yep. So it- <laughs> I, I usually stick with my baseball stuff. Yeah. For my, my niche and my team, by the way, number one, the Honkers. Let's yes. Go. Uh, d- Frank, I- Frank, how's your trivia team doing? Oh no. We're uh, dead. We it- <laughs> everything's falling apart. Jeff purposely looks for the worst questions that will. 
uh, make us look bad and uh, gives the best questions to our opponents who will make them look good. <laughs> it, I, I Full disclosure, a member from my two favorite dozen teams. I am a big dozen fan. I The Honkers are my they're my squad. I, I love the Honkers. Wise choice. It, it, wise to end. I, I go the OG honkers, you know, with with a man that uh, I don't know if he should be named since he is no longer with the company. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cole, Cole, Cole Mick is one of my favorite just sports entertainers out there. And once the big screaming honkers became a thing with him and I've stuck with him. Love you guys. And Frank, you have the most entertaining team to watch in the history of trivia. <laughs> it, it not just the dozen. It it's so entertaining to watch you guys. I mean, obviously you're fantastic, but Nick and KB are one of the funniest duos in the world. And not just at Bart, it, I can't get enough of those guys. How Nick Nick is so funny and so creative and so sharp. Even like when you're in the office, like he'll do like some fun. Like I, we all went out uh, the other night before we left for like a tungsten thing. Yeah, the tungsten. Yeah, and like <laughs> Nick had me laughing so hard I was crying at the bar. Like it's just con- like he's just consistently hysterical and KB is great too like the two of them together is, is perfect yeah they're great Frank uh, thoughts on the team in terms of the the roster construction are we going to see any changes coming for Frank and the Frankettes I don't know soon? It's, just, it's just been very frustrating these this year it just and uh, we're right now matched up against the um, Mincy's team and you know yep. uh, we never beat them yeah Mincy has seemed to have your number a bit hasn't he I mean we're it just the the, the, uh, the questions are going to be uh, at Chick Fil A, and then we're going to be asked a question about uh, Bojangles. <laughs> well, Fra- Frank's a big Devils fan, so we should have that to be happy about. Yeah, well, they're going to uh, good season now. It's always they're going to get swept, and next year they're going to be terrible again. <laughs> there, there it is, the classic Frank the Tank optimism we've all come to know and love. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's so, like, poetic, right? They go to the Syracuse Mets game, and what happens? They have their worst game of the year, right? Yep. They've been mashing, and then they just muster up three hits. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you can't write it better than that. I have a question for you guys. Sure. Uh, I guess a semi-serious question. So since the Syracuse Mets became the Mets, they obviously, that's fairly new. Yeah, only, this is year four, I think. Have you guys seen an uptick in this area of Mets fans? Like, you know what I mean? Did people, did that draw anyone to becoming a Mets fan? So it's weird. This city has a very diverse sports fan base because we're sort of in the middle of everything in terms of NFL. Yeah. There's a lot of bills fans because Buffalo is the closest professional city, but there isn't really a ton of loyalty to one team in this area. I am a Red Sox Celtics Eagles fan, and I have lived here my entire life. Now I'm an Eagles fan because Donovan McNabb went to Syracuse University, was the quarterback when I was growing up. The you know sort of found a way to root for teams, and that's what a lot of people around here did. There are a lot of Yankees fans, and I would say I've seen an uptick in Mets fans that are proud to be Mets fans. I think having and not saying that they weren't proud before. Also, I don't know how I just noticed that you're wearing a Syracuse Salt Potatoes hat. Tank, that's amazing. You know, um, I, I I personally wish that the uh, I think that minor league teams that use the parent club name mm-hmm. are so boring. I I, I I I don't that was the thing I didn't love. When I thought it was great that we were gonna be the triple A for the Mets. I them being in Las Vegas before that was always so stupid to me. I never understood that. So I thought it was great that we were hooking on with the New York team. We were the Yankees farm team for a long time. We were the Blue Jays farm team, that uh then the Nationals. So we've We've never had, like, a true home. It's not like we've been one team forever. Oh, were you the Blue Jays for a long time? We were the Blue Jays for a long time. The, uh, the Blue Jays were the longest chunk, I mean, I think. You, were, you were the Syracuse. Yeah, you were the, the Yankees were Syracuse, I think, up until, like, around 80, 81. And then the— uh, Maybe even earlier than that. It might have been the late 70s. I don't— maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah, around there. The yeah. Same, around between 79 and 80, mm-hmm. it switched to the Blue Jays, and they were the Syracuse Chiefs forever. Yeah, yeah. We were we were the Syracuse Chiefs with the Blue—I mean— Roy Halladay came through here. So did George Bell and Tony Fernandez and Jesse Barfield. Like, you know, a lot of great Blue Jays have come through here. But I love the fact that we're the Mets now. And I do think there has been an an uptick in people. You just see out and about wearing Mets gear. You know, a hat, a shirt. I see more people in Mets gear than I used to before we were the Syracuse Mets. So I, I would say, yes, there has been an uptick. Maybe not in new fans. I'm sure a lot of kids that... Haven't you know? A lot of kids around here don't adopt teams from their parents. You know, 
They go to a Syracuse Mets game when they're like five, six years old. Yeah, they become a Mets fan because, and I know a lot of people that did that with Nationals because when I was growing up, a lot of it was spent as we were the AAA for the Washington Nationals. And so Bryce Harper is one of my favorite players because I watched him play here in Syracuse. Same with Steven Strasburg. So there, I, I think we will be seeing a lot more Mets fans that were born here because the Syracuse Mets. And hopefully it's a long partnership. I, I hope we stick on with the Mets for a very long time. I think it's a great partnership. I just hope that they... Find a better nickname. I I, I, I agree. I, I mean, we got uh, the Mets Hunter Farm System is not too far from here. Is uh, the Binghamton, Binghamton Rumble, Rumble Ponies. Ponies. Ponies? Have you guys Best gone name. to a Rumble Ponies I game? Have. You have? Yeah. It, that stadium's nice too. I mean, for a Double A ballpark, that place is pretty nice. Yeah, the first game I went to last year, the uh, Binghamton Mets lost fifteen to one. <laughs> they were down uh, eleven to nothing after the first inning. I believe it was. It was. It was. They had this pitcher, Alec Kalina. Okay. And he literally got lit up like the 4th of July. (laughs) This this poor guy is probably, you know, driving Uber right now. And and he's got Frank (laughs) just trashing him left and right. Frank that's trashing him on the A couple years ago, Frank. The guy's, you know, hanging drywall somewhere in somebody's basement. And and you're just trashing him. And on the local radio in Syracuse. That's that's the thing. It's not like we're in Binghamton, you know. It's not like we're we're in Queens. They did release him right after that game. Oh, (laughs) no. That poor guy. The poor guy. I, I went there once, actually. And last year, the day I happened to go, it was Pete Alonzo bobblehead night. He, oh, nice. ca- he came through Binghamton. But the bobblehead, instead of wearing baseball pants, he has polar bear legs. And he's so it's a polar bear Pete Alonzo bobblehead. It's one of my favorite bobbleheads in my collection. I have many. And that one sticks out. They that gave out a, a polar bear Pete bobblehead at City Field last year. Mm-hmm. Now it's, it's him. And then you have like a detachable polar bear head you can put on its, on its body. Oh, that's fantastic. Are, are you a big bobblehead guy, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, about five shelves of bobbleheads. Oh, I've, I've got three at the house. I've got three pretty full shelves. Frank's so. collection is legit. He has some bobbleheads. You're wondering, like, why would you even want this in uh, your house? Favorite bobblehead. Do you, do you, have, a, do you have a favorite bobblehead? Uh, it was one that was given out by the Mets about ten years ago. It's uh, Jesse Orozco on his knees with his arms oh, up. Oh, nice! That's from the '86 World Series. That's a, that's a great one. That's a that that's a. Re- I like the ones like that. I've got a a Mookie Betts diving over the wall in right field to save the shutout in that Rich Hill game against the Orioles, which is just a very random one to have, but it's really cool because it's Mookie Betts laying across the right field wall on a bobblehead. Uh, I've got I, Carlton Fisk doing the wave fair. I got a uh, bobblehead of. Uh, uh, it's a Star Wars bobblehead. It's got Chewbacca, and uh, Mr. Met dresses Han Solo in the cockpit of the uh, Millennium Falcon. Yes, I'm, I'm a big Star Wars guy. That's great. I love that so much. So you two, if you don't mind, you know, it, would you like to stick around for a while? You know, keep talking. I've I've got to take a break here because the the overlords are. If you want to stick around, do one more segment, or if you if you guys need to head out, you can head out. And plug your stuff. You, I know you've got well, a meeting great Excel tonight. Taco tonight. Of course, we're going to go around uh, doing some uh, hot dog reviews. Uh, we're going to be going to Hyde's. You're going to Hyde's? I was going right. to ask you. Yeah, going to Hyde's. Uh, I wish, uh, I'm assuming you've had Hoffman hot dogs. Uh, yes, they might have been the first time I had Hoffman hot dog. Really? Yeah. What, what were your thoughts? I thought the snap was very good. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're, uh, I'm I'm not a huge hot, hot dog guy in general. They... People love. I mean, people insist they're the best hot dogs they've ever had. So, they're very good. But we will be at Exo Taco tonight from five to seven. Um, so stop by. You can say mm-hmm. hi to us. We'd love to see you guys. Uh, should be a fun time there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Five to seven Exo Taco. Uh, the Mets game actually be on at that time. By the way, I think they're on four thirty today. Yeah, so you can watch Frank melt down if the Mets are down one nothing in the third <laughs> inning, and and and, uh, and you can enjoy your uh, nice time at Exo Taco. All right, befo- yeah, before yeah, David, David David Peterson's pitching today, and he and yeah, uh, we're we're very familiar with David Peterson in these parts. <laughs> did, he, uh, did he did he walk a million people down here too? Uh, a few, I don't know about a million, but maybe five hundred thousand. Hey, it was. What, what about Lucchese last night? You got to give him some credit. He was doing well for the Syracuse, and then yeah, Lucchese. I mean, he had a great start his last time out for Syracuse. Mm-hmm. He, he was Joey Lucchese was. Was dealing yesterday. He, he, yeah. he was having to, he did, the Giants just didn't know. He had no clue what to do with him. Yeah. How no. many former Mets are on this Giants team right now? 
Well, I mean, there's you got there's, Conforto. There's you got one Ruff, that the, I was going to say. There's one that shall not be named. I uh, I wasn't going my, to say it. <laughs> the, 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 Flores. The, they had a uh, the lineup the other day was uh, uh, Flores batting second, Conforto batting third, JD Davis batting fourth, and uh, Darren Ruff batting fifth. I mean, it, in twenty. 20- 14. I mean, that's that's a great lineup. Frank, but... you must you must really miss Darren Ruff in the Mets. Oh, God, he's so horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he's going to do. You know he's going to light it up for the Giants, right? He's hitting well. He got a base hit in the ninth inning with two outs and down 7 nothing. My my father's a San Francisco Giants fan. Uh, he grew he grew up watching Mays, McCovey, all those guys. So he's a big Giants fan, and I I know he's loving this conversation right now, just about Darren Ruff and how he has performed in San Francisco. That's why the Mets traded for him. He was performing very well, and it just didn't work out, man. It, it was just a bad bad trade. It was, and he had to give up four players from two. Yeah, I think it was four players. <laughs> I don't know who the I don't know who the other two are. No one's ever really mentioned their names. The other one's Thomas Jabucky, who really wasn't good. Yeah, uh, Thomas Jabucky, he's he hasn't worked out great. <laughs> it, that 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 didn't end up uh, working out for anyone. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. It was a blast talking to you guys. I'm not that I have to go out and tell anyone to watch your content on Barstool Sports. You both do an amazing job. The double play, uh, for, what allow me to be frank. Uh, great podcast. Of course, my YouTube channel, uh, NJ, T- NJ Frank Tank. Yeah, yep. Frank the Tank uh, Fleming on YouTube. Uh, subscribe. You'll be notified of any video I put out. Yep. The the soda reviews have always the been one of my favorites. Too. The cooking videos are fantastic. I saw you recently did a, a Saranac soda as well. Yes. Uh, local. They're about 40 minutes from here. Yeah. I, Saranac root beer to me is a, a perfect soda. It is so. a very good soda. Very good root beer. Yeah. So... Thank you guys so much for coming on. It Thanks was a, for having us. Yeah, it was a pleasure to have you in studio. And, yeah, go to Exo Taco tonight, 5 to 7. Meet the guys. They're real, really great guys. It's been awesome having them here.